Well, what is going on, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer and Mike Goolsby back on the Blue and Gold YouTube channel talking some Notre Dame football. You know, usually Goolsby and I, we do these shows. We have a whole outline of things we're talking about. The headline of this video, in-depth on Notre Dame's quarterback situation, that's all we're talking about. That That's all we have planned. We have Super Chats turned on, so you guys can drop Super Chats. We can talk about whatever you guys are vibing with. Um, but this is this is just two two dudes with the same first name just kicking back and, and talking some Notre Dame football with the folks on the quarterback position. Goolsby, trust everything's well on your end, man. Yeah, life's good, man. Life is good. Um, staying busy over here, brother. Still haven't fixed this cord just yet. It's on okay. the uh, off season list of things to do. Okay, so for folks on YouTube watching on YouTube. Please hold your complaining about the cord comments. We get those a lot. Mike, I love your shirt, by the way. When we're, when we're talking about Notre Dame quarterbacks, you're, you're, you're rocking the uh, this Hartman Victory March shirt from Homefield. That's right. Homefield, great product. Love the yeah. stuff. But yeah, anytime, dude, we're going to bring up quarterbacks, it's like it's just such a natural thing to do. You yeah. know, slight, slight, it's a subtle troll job by myself. But uh, yeah, man, lots of... This quarterback room singer for content creators like you and myself, it's like it is just the gift that keeps on giving, unfortunately, you yeah. know? Yeah. Not that anyone asked, but I'm rocking a Taco Bell shirt. Just happened to be. We already got Why Not Pennies. Sorry, Mike. I was just going to say, like, the Taco Bell shirt, do you like lifetime membership type thing? You know, you order you so think. many cheesy stuff, grilled burritos. They just, they mail you a shirt. Is that how that goes? Uh, Mike, I'm not going to lie. I, I've said it on the shows like, Hey, Taco Bell, if you're watching this, if this happens to get to you, please get in contact with me. I'm, I've spent time trying to get in contact with these people. I need to spend a little bit more time, but I'm, I'm working on it, Mike. Stick with it. Stick with it. I will. I will. Yeah. Why not? Kenny is going uh, in the YouTube chat. Um, yeah. So, all right, Mike, we'll start with the news of Riley Leonard um, and his uh, second um, ankle surgery. Freeman announced this on Saturday. Got the quote pulled up on YouTube. I will um, read it for you guys um, as well. This is from Freeman, opening statement is press conference. Part of what he said to open it he said Riley Leonard will be out a few weeks due to an additional surgery he had on his ankle on Friday to address a stress fracture that be was beginning to develop. Basically, the surgery was to exchange the current plate he had in his ankle with the new one. The doctor thought it went extremely well. The overall prognosis and health of his ankle is excellent. So we'll see when he can get back. We're not putting a timetable. We know it's going to be a few weeks. We're not saying he's out for the spring. There could be a chance he comes back and participates in some capacity during spring ball. My read on this, Mike, C capacity in spring ball. Yeah, maybe he's uh, standing there, maybe taking some mental reps. He's what is on this? the bike. He's, he's on the bike in the pit, you know, whatever. Yeah, he, he's not doing anything for a while. So your your reaction to this, Mike, when you get the news, um, you know, when, whenever <clears throat> that was for you? It's, it's really unfortunate for Riley Leonard. I don't anticipate he's going to practice at all during the spring. What what can you say that hasn't been said over the last 48 hours regarding this? There's a lot to unpack per usual, but it's like, you know, this ankle has been a thing since September 30th when Howard Cross rolled him up at the end of the game. Like, it's been a thing. You know, the tough kid, Riley gutted it out, tried to play through it, hurts his numbers, um, you know, his accuracy, all this stuff, because he's just, you know, he's playing on a, on a bum leg. But it's been a thing for a while, and I've taken to calling Riley Leonard an athlete playing quarterback, okay? So for folks that don't know, like Riley was on schedule to be a basketball player. You know, he was like a mid, mid-tier, mid like D1, like shooting guard from what I understand. Football really took front stage, center stage through COVID because Riley wasn't allowed to go to like these travel AAU circuits, whatever. Duke was his only offer as far as I'm aware, is to play football. So, like, Riley is, for all of the physical gifts, for all the God-given ability that he has, like, he's still very much a work in progress at the quarterback position. And I was, for one, was looking forward to the challenge that was going to give Coach Gadouli to build him up um, and just make him better. 
And like for all the talk of like who's your starter and Jelly Minchy, like all like that whole world, it's like the big piece is spring ball is to compete and to develop and to get better. Like when you go into fall camp, especially with a game like Texas AM looming, there's not like a lot of like development, i.e., practicing to get better. Um, the scenario is completely different. So it's like this really hurts Riley Leonard's development overall because he's not going to do boo during spring ball. So that's like my first takeaway. And then the second thing is it's like, this is kind of why like I started that Patreon. Like there's, there's like goings on with like, how did Riley get here? You know, like, was there a physical involved? Wasn't there a physical involved? And um, it's like, Remember, Mike, when I went out of state to buy that old Land Cruiser? You remember that? Doesn't matter. I don't, but continue. So went out, went out of state to buy a Land Cruiser. You know, they run forever. Mine's got 325,000 miles on it. Drive it every day. But it's like, I'm not going to buy a used car sight unseen. You feel me? Okay. Like, you want to, well, what's the rust look like? You know, is the radiator been replaced, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, we bought a used car. We got the car facts. You could see that it had been in an, been in an accident, you know, with the ankle injury against us. Like you knew the ink, but like you don't buy a used car sight unseen. So now I'm more interested in like, how does Freeman handle this room? How does Denbrock, what is that? Like, what does this whole process look like? Cause you, you know, you take the money involved with a, 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 an acquiring a Riley Leonard and you are going to assume He's going to be handed the job, for lack of a better expression, just because of the the just the dollar amount. And it's like, what does this look like going into fall camp? If if this is a competition, like Freeman said at his last presser, a real competition, and like, is Riley so Steve's your starter now? Does Riley have to work his way up from second string going into fall ball? Right, because he can't compete. You know, and he, he, don't forget that development piece to his game at the quarterback position. So the whole thing is complex. Yeah. It's nuanced. Um, you know, Tim Hyde, he's got his thoughts. He's like, you know, if, if Angeli is the guy in 2025, why can't he be the guy in 2024? <sighs> you know, and, and Tim has a lot of great thoughts. Wait, you, wait, 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 wait. He has a hard time, like, making, like, a, a closing argument. Like, put that's, a bow on it's crazy because he's a politician, so I'm I'm, I'm shocked he's not yeah. good at that. So, um, and then you talk about Denbrock, and this is all stuff that will spitball during this episode. But like two years in a row, Notre Dame gets a transfer quarterback. Two years in a row, that transfer quarterback isn't working with the offensive coordinator that he signed to play for, right? You know. Hartman landed when Reese was still here before he went off to Bama. So then Parker inherited this quarterback and then Denbrock had really nothing to do with Riley coming over in the portal. Now he inherits him. It's just okay. fascinating stuff. Okay. And then that whole room, really the only guy that Denbrock was involved with at the tail end of that recruitment was like Carr. If even, I mean, a car was an early, I mean, Take that back because Carlo was an early enrollee. He was practicing in the bowl team. Denbrock didn't even come over yet. So it's like all four quarterbacks, Denbrock had nothing to do with. And how does that play out into this decision? Well, and then the only other thing, Mike, sorry. sorry. Mm -hmm. No, no, go put a, put a quarter in me. Um, I'm just looking through my notes here. Uh, the lack of fanfare for Riley Leonard has been – Endlessly fascinating singer. We talk about this every show, I feel like. And I give you the same answer. It's because people were they got their hearts broken by Hartman. Like it was a little a little bit I'm, of a letdown. Not the, they didn't meet the yeah. expect he didn't meet the expectations. Yeah, he's a heartthrob. Um and they're sad he's gone. And, and you know, I think it's it's really just that. It's not that. No, no, but seriously, I, I, I think it's it's very much, you know. Once bitten, twice shy type deal. There you go. I was gonna say the fool me once. I but I always screw it up, so I'm not gonna say it. That that whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, but the only time we really hear of Riley Leonard is injury news. 
So it's like, I'm just, you don't want to go too far out on a limb, but like, I'm a little worried about like big picture 2024. What does this mean for Riley Leonard? He's not going to get to practice, improve, work with all the fine or minute details of playing the quarterback position. And then he goes into like fall camp, getting ready for a huge matchup with AM with like no practice. Okay. I want to dive into that part, Mike, from a player's perspective. He gets here in January, right? True one year rental. This is all, the, this is it. Unless the NCAA grants a, yeah, a heavenly favor or something. I don't know. The Pope calls in something. You know, Who I knows with the NCAA anymore? Right, right correct. Now. Who knows? Who but knows? He, he, you know, he, he had the setback earlier this year. Notre Dame gets him back, right? Shows him off with the medicine ball. He's injured again, right? There's a lot like, oh, he's going to miss some time in spring ball. No, he's not. Now he is, right? So basically gets, what, three, four spring practices? I can't remember which one today. They had practice today. I don't know what number that was, maybe five or six. So he gets a few spring practices out. I would guess out of, you know, workouts through – I mean, I'm not a doctor, but let's just say he's out of most of May, too. What does the summer look like for him? June, July? Then you get fall camp. As a player who is just getting used to Notre Dame, and you've talked about the development piece. He's Sam Hartman came here as a finished product. He is not. So how concerned are you right now about the player who, unless he is not healthy, we fully anticipate him to start, right? If he, uh, if he's healthy or healthy enough, he's the starting quarterback. So with all this in mind, Mike, are you concerned much? I think Singer, well, you just walk that back a little bit. You just said if he's healthy, he's your starter. Correct. I guess what I'm saying I don't know if that's the case anymore, dude. Okay. I don't know if that's the case anymore. So he's not, he's lay, not, out, lay out that scenario, Mike. Lay out that scenario. He's at least healthy enough, but he's not the guy. What does that look like? Oh, so you're saying – so what you're asking me, just to make sure we're on the same page, is like going into a he's fully healthy. Or, and he's or healthy not, and he's, Right, because you're saying that's a possibility for you, right? Absolutely. At this okay, point, so yeah, absolutely. Lay then, that out for me. What would that look like? In terms of like what the actual depth chart would be? How Notre Dame would not start him. I, yeah, I'll say this. I don't, I don't yeah. let me get my bearings to that question, but I'll say this like Freeman's last presser. And we've talked about this. Marcus needs to get better at those like big room press conferences. I love him in these little intimate, like one-on-one. I saw him interviewed at the pro day, like loved it. And yeah. that's, I think of like Marcus sitting in a living room. That's like that recruiting thing. He knocks it out of the park in these little intimate interview settings. But at that, at that pulpit, he sometimes tends to struggle. There's a couple follow-up questions about the depth chart, you know, quarterbacks picking a start or whatever. And not that he started sweating, but he was a little shook. I don't know if Marcus knows what this is going to look like. I frankly, I don't, I mean, this is a huge, wrench that's been thrown into it um but yeah I'm, I'm just telling you man it's a it's a quarterback that has a lot of god-given ability that needs work and that's what spring is really for he's sort of crowned the starter based off of the transaction that already took place but now you don't get that work so that just means steve angeli's getting better it means kenny minchie's getting better while riley's collecting dust riding a bike you know, so I, I don't know. I mean, does that mean that week three he doesn't supersede whoever the starter is? Like if Steve were to start against AM and plays great, maybe he holds him off. But if he plays so so, maybe that gives you a reason enough to like elevate Riley Leonard. But it's um I don't know, and that's kind of what Tim Hyde has tried to tell, try to explain is like what is the plan here? What is the immediate short-term plan with this room and what is the long-term plan with this room and sitting here today like i don't i don't have a confident answer with it either yeah yeah for folks watching youtube we got a a practice clip 
uh, from a week, a week or two ago of, of all four quarterbacks, you know, going through a little drill. And I just love you. You have the, uh, the, the handsome Sam Hartman, just, just looking back <laughs> or he's behind, just, just looking on. I love this clip. One of my favorites. He yeah. Sam Hartman, if Sam Hartman was at practice wearing this shirt, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> you know, but, uh, like, and I, you know, reading reports reading opinions on the injury thing like the general consensus is and it's a straight line and it's an obvious answer it's like well this is great for the rest of the room right kenny minchie gets to get more reps cj carr gets to get more reps and jelly gets to just maybe get more and more you know ownership of the team but they're glossing over like big picture what does this mean for riley leonard and okay. it's not it's not good and then and then we're talking about a quarterback competition. Freeman loves to talk about the quarterback competition. Some of that's kind of said in jest because we know like a Hartman was guaranteed the job. So if this is a competition and then somehow like going into fall camp, like Riley's getting all the number one reps, if he were a first round pick, like you would understand. Yeah. Right? We, we, He's a, he's a top five pick. He's the future of the franchise. You you would understand that, but that this isn't that. Yeah, I'm almost like or I am pretty thankful that Freeman had this as a quarterback competition, so that even though I don't believe that was really ever a thing, it, it kind of has to be now. It has to be. You have to keep Steve and the guys very engaged. Um, and then so. he said he said. Something to the effect of, well, this makes it easy on Coach Gadouli. You know, Steve runs with the ones, Kenny runs with the twos. And if there's a scenario, this is almost verbatim. I watched the press conference twice. He said, like, verbatim. And if there's a scenario where we're only running ones and twos, we can sprinkle in CJ Carr with Kenny. You know, they can go back and forth with the twos. And there was a follow up question, which I appreciated. And they were like, well, what does that Does that mean? Like, long term, that's the case. And then in terms of this, is this depth chart concrete? And he was like, well, for today it is. And he's like, and probably tomorrow. But he was like, I love that this is going to be a quarterback competition, which is the natural response. But I'm just saying big picture, Riley ain't going to practice during the spring. He's got to heal up over the summer. And then we will find out what type of competition this is come fall camp to be like, what's the rep share based off of what we get to see at practice. And then the only other thing, and I've texted you and Hyde about this is like Riley Leonard in comparison to the other three quarterbacks, forgive me singer, but he's out of shape. He's out of shape. He's not, you're not, you're looking at muscle tone. I mean, CJ Carr comes in as a freshman and you expect these freshmen to have a little baby fat. Like we saw with Angeli, like we saw with Minchie before they kind of clean their, their bodies up, you know, in this college weight room, college nutrition, whatever. I just wasn't blown away by Riley's like overall aesthetic and how that relates to like general conditioning. I wasn't mm. blown away. So I'm like, he's not as fit as I would like an athletic quarterback to be. Okay. Mike. So can we go like 60 second sound bites on all four scholarship quarterbacks? And then we can dive into more of them or we can dive into each of them more specifically. But do you 60, think you 60 seconds a piece? I mean, you gotta you gotta help me out. I know, I know. I All will. Right, yeah. Okay. Hit me. Hit me. Riley Leonard. Your outlook for him between now and Texas A and M. What are you thinking about him? And I, we've been talking about him for a while now. But what is your sixty second outlook on Riley Leonard right now? When I think about Riley Leonard and I think about the A and M game, my mind jumps right back to Freeman and Denbrock. And the, the transactional piece to the free agent signing, the, the NIL deal, the competition, that's where my brain goes, is what is this going to look like? But ultimately, dude, <laughs> if you take out the money piece, Angeli's ahead of him. If you take that out, he's ahead of him in terms of like locker room type stuff. Uh, just even even the nuances of playing the quarterback position. Now he might not have some of the same physical gifts or traits that 
that a Riley Leonard does. But in terms of like just on paper, like quarterback stuff, he's going to be ahead. So yeah. then that goes back to come fall camp. If Riley's working in with the ones, it, it's going to make myself and maybe that locker room kind of raise an eyebrow. Be like, wait a minute. You know, what's what what's your 60 second outlook now on Steve Angeli? What do Notre Dame fans need to know about where Steve Angeli fits into this whole situation now after the, you know, the the Riley Leonard injury, which again, it's not the end of the world, but there there is a pattern of of issues here with this with this ankle and its durability. Yeah. So when you say outlook, these are just thoughts that come to mind. If I'm Steve Angeli, I am trying to rid myself of that Brian Kelly conservative, and that's the guy that recruited him, right? You know, and he was under Kelly, under Reese, like some of that formative DNA of like that conservative quarterback play, you know, the check down guy, right? I'm trying to rid myself of that and I'm trying to let him hang this spring. Show Coach Denbrock all that I can do versus I make the right decision. I want him to be able to like envision if this is a live fire game, high stakes, SEC athletes lined up on the you know, playoff type scenario. I've got what it takes to win us a game. Does that make sense? Yes. That's that's what I think about with Angeli. Shut people like me up. Hashtag why not Kenny Mike? How does this impact Kenny Menchi? If, if at all, what's your outlook on him right now? Uh, I still think he's got the most talented arm in the room. It's my understanding he's the fastest of the quarterbacks. It's my understanding he he's kind of a more of a gamer singer than he is like a practice guy. So like obvious example would be like think of like a Brett Favre, right? Can roll out of bed and, and go play a game, but he's not going to be the most diligent practice player. And that would be my challenge to to Kenny this spring is like. Spring is all about growing, competing, developing. That's a piece of your persona, a piece of your game, play style. You've got to get better uh, in that practice scenario. But at the same time, also let them hang, you know, show off that arm talent um, when the time arises. But Kenny probably, dude, hasn't been given much of a chance at you know up to this point in his Notre, Notre Dame career. And you really couldn't ask for much more than where he's at right now. But I will say, you know, there's been talk about somebody leaving via the transfer portal. And that's why I was like, well, why can't Angeli leave? Or why couldn't Carl leave? Shit, why couldn't Riley Leonard leave? You know, why is it always focused at Kenny? That he would be the odd man out. Um, so however this rep share gets broken down, that'll be curious. Because there is, there's a player decision to enter a portal. And there's also the coaches are having conversations, you know. This isn't like player X wakes up one day and says, to hell with this, I'm jumping in the portal. There's conversations that take place. So I'm curious to see the Angeli Minchie onesie, twosie rep share, how that breaks down. Okay. And then lastly, CJ Carr. Um, yeah, I mean, QB4 right now is a true freshman, but I'm curious your initial thoughts on him right now in this quarterback room. I'm moving forward. Um, based on <laughs> – remember like they had the one practice and they went on spring break for 10 days or whatever? Based off of the coverage, it was like we do have other quarterbacks on the roster not named C.J. Carr. So I was like that was kind of telling to me in terms of like how Notre Dame football, all of the different entities covered this thing because there was a lot of C.J. Carr talk. And like we, we love Colin Cowherd and Colin Cowherd always talks about – I talk about what you guys are interested in. So I'm sure mm -hmm. there's an element of just fans wanting, wanting to see CJ, but um, yeah, I mean, he looks great. Looks great. I still prefer Kenny's arm talent over CJ. Um, and I just think of like, I mean, Kenny versus CJ and I'm going to keep trying to weave Kenny into this thing. CJ is probably more polished in terms of like presentation value, you know, having been groomed and kind of grew up with the sport and around big time characters, et cetera. So, I mean, CJ's, he's not going to have any missteps and he's like a kind of a package package deal, but we're going to find out how talented he is, but uh, it's kind of a wait and see deal there. Okay. All right.
I like that, Mike. I can't sing her last thought about CJ. I don't know how this thing's going to shake out, but I just uh, I think about Deuce Knight way too much, right, dude? So it's All like right. if, if, Let's Carr, go there. if Carr were to ever become the guy early on ish, might it make it more difficult to transition to a Deuce? So that's kind of why I'm always like hashtag Why not Kenny? If Kenny were to be your starter for a year or two, to me it makes it easier to roll into Deuce. Mm. What you about know? this scenario, Mike? Let's say Leonard starts half the games, knock on wood, something happens. I don't know. I think if you if I were to say by the end of the year, for what for one reason or another, and Jelly is starting, I don't think people would be like, that is the most ridiculous thing. So let's just let's just play that. And Jelly knocking on wood, but let's just play and Jelly starts at the end of the year. Looks pretty good. Whether that means they're in a playoff game or not, I don't know. But let's just say you look good. And then they roll with him for a couple years. He's got two more years of eligibility after this season. Freeman likes to be comfortable with his quarterback, know what he has, all that good stuff. And Jelly will be a guy going into his fourth year in 2025. And then in this scenario, and Jelly's done, you have. We're now we're on to 2026, right? You got right. I mean, this is crazy talking this far in advance, but you know, no, not. no it's not, dude. It's Notre Dame football, man. Yeah, it's 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 March 25th. I mean, come on. You would have CJ Carr going through his junior year, Deuce Knight going into his sophomore year. In this scenario, you would think Kenny would be gone by then. Mm, it would be tasty to go from Angeli to potentially Knight at that point, Mike. What do you think about my crazy little scenario here? Dude, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. All I'll say about Steve is um, you can have this, Mike, but Angeli's army, right? You are uh, the lieutenant in, in, in Angeli. General. General Singer is leading Angeli's army, the fan base that's pushing for Steve. Make a T-shirt, Angeli's army. People, Notre Dame fans, want a homegrown product. And I do think that that's part of why Riley Leonard isn't getting a lot of fanfare. People are ready for a homegrown product. Steve is next in line. My question about Steve is live fire elite athletes on the other side of the offensive line or other side of the ball. Can he get loose? Can he make some magic happen in a way that I believe Riley Leonard can, in a way I believe Kenny Minchie can? And probably CJ Carr and certainly Deuce Knight can. Because that's the thing that people have to understand is like playoff football, top tier matchups, stuff breaks down. It just does. And it's like, who's a guy that can manage that scenario? And that's my question to Steve. Can he squirt loose? Can he find find room? Can he wiggle out of there? Can he make something happen? Because that's like those defensive ends and those outside linebackers and whomever, those blitzers, I mean, they're on scholarship too. Nothing is going to be blocked perfect 100% of the time. And the tougher the matchup, the more elite the athletes are, the more likely it's going to happen. You got an inexperienced offensive line you're going to be rolling out. It's like that's why I kind of want an athlete back there that can make a bad offensive line an inexperienced – I shouldn't say bad. Take that back, redact that – an inexperienced offensive line that can make them right if they have a, a, a physical error, a mental error, whatever. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. I don't know, good. man. Oh, that, that's, good. That, that'll be the test. That'll be the test. Does, does Steve get swallowed up like you saw Sam Hartman? Would get, just get sometimes just enveloped by a rush versus somebody that can squirt loose and keep their eyes downfield? I don't know. I'm biased as hell on this one, Mike. I love the kid. No, I, think I, don't. I think he's got shit to him, man. I Listen, think I, him. truly, dude. I'm, I'm, mean, I'm, I'm rooting for um, I, Angeli's a hard guy not to like. I'm rooting for Angeli. I just believe that Kenny Minchie has more physical gifts. That's what I, I think. Yeah, he might, but I think Angeli's got some New Jersey shit to him. Is it one tough no, 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 no doubt, no doubt. But, dude, that's yet another another Notre Dame quarterback, and we're talking about his intangibles. I'm so sick of it. 
Dude, there has been Notre Dame quarterbacks who have been the elite athletes that did not pan out either. So I, I don't upside. One, one's on the lacrosse team right now. I mean, I don't know, dude. At at some like I, I get your intangible points. At some point, just give me a quarterback. I just want to you just, just just give me the guy. I just want the yeah. guy. You know. I thought about this last night in terms of the excitement and kind of really, frankly, like the hype around Angeli, like that Angeli's army, the pro Angeli crowd. Totally get it because he's the next man up. Again, I think fans are clamoring for a homegrown product. Totally get it. But he was a, Mike, three-star-ish, Sam, or excuse me, Steve? Yes. Okay. Putting you on the spot, Singer, since you're the – General of Angeli's Army. I'm going to keep saying it so it catches on. Hashtag why not Kenny? Same difference. What is the NFL draft pick slash round equivalent to a third uh, three-star quarterback? Is that a fifth-round pick? Fourth round? Sixth round? What does that look like? I mean, there's like... Answer the question. Come on. I think there's probably over a thousand three-stars, so it's anywhere from fifth to undrafted. You're not playing in the league. Okay. So that's where I was just thinking about that last night. And I'm like, I totally get it. Like he's Steve's a you know, Notre Dame dude. John and I talk about it on the Patreon all the time. Like the Notre Dame-iness of Angeli is very appealing to people. And CJ Carl be the exact same way. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if like we're getting excited about a sixth round pick. No, I I I don't know. I don't I don't think people are like over the moon about it. I think people who are Mike, as someone who's leading this army that you're speaking of, all I've been seeing is Angeli slander for years, whether it's right or wrong, we'll see. But it's more coming around to him because people are just over the Leonard thing. It's more, I, I feel like it's more about over the Leonard thing and some good signs and some garbage time and against Oregon State, but it's more about just being over the Leonard ex experiment already from the, just seeing what I read on a daily basis and YouTube comments on, on the message board. So, and you, know, and you know what's crazy about the Leonard experiment? You said people are over the Leonard experiment. Experiment, it might be over, and that's what we're talking about. No spring ball, no continuity, no progression. I hope, I, I I hope not. No work, no work with Coach Gino. You know he's he's going to be injured six to eight weeks. If you Google the injury, six to eight weeks. Hmm. It's just, yeah, it's, it this isn't this isn't how Freeman drew it up. If he yeah. did draw, draw it up, and it's uh, and again, I'm I'm putting words in Tim Hyde's mouth, but like that's where Tim Hyde's frustrations with Coach Freeman and the Freeman in the quarterback room and all, the way all this has been handled is like what what was the plan? Was was there a plan? What was yeah, it? Yeah, but then the Tim will go back to what was the plan. And then he'll be like, well, it should be Angeli. Well, I'll be like, well, Tim, do you like Angeli? And then I'll be like, no, not really. I'll be like, all right, Tim, I don't really know what you want, bro. No, you know me and Tim, he talks in circles. Love you, Tim. I know you're watching while you're doing the dishes. I love you, Tim. Um, we'll, and we'll talk Wednesday. Uh, Mike, Angeli and Carr, similarities and differences. And you really only have, you know, the limited Angeli film practice film and high school stuff to go off of and him and car, you know, just your, your three minutes of clips you get. And then, you know, high school film. I'm curious of your comparison between the two um, car, car and Angeli. I think similar arm strength. Uh, Steve does throw a pretty ball, but the release is kind of slow. Like the whole, and again, go just, I want you to picture that Mike, like live fire, live bullets, sec defense, like it ain't going to be pretty, you know, this isn't mop up duty. It's not playing Oregon state and their ragtag defense. Like this is real S here, right? Does he have time to make all those beautiful throws? Does he have time to get his feet underneath him, et cetera? I think they throw a, a, a similar ball, similar arm strength. Mike, can I interrupt you? Be the, the on three ranked car by far the lowest. Do you know what they're, Issue for the lack of a better term with him was like the the live fire like reps like what you're talking about that was like on three like the game like he needs the game to slow down for him like that was their thing on car. Well, this this is the this is the thing. So let's help help me stay on track. We 
per usual. You asked me about the comparisons between the two. I, again, they both above average arm strength, nothing elite. Mm -hmm. CJ has a quicker release to me. I can't. He comes off his ear, which I'm not crazy about. I mean, Joe Walt's six nine for crying out loud. I mean, that ball comes off his ear in terms of like the release point. Um, and then you know, when I talked about CJ being you know polished, like that camp circuit, the quarterback coach thing, right? It's like he's gone through these quarterback workouts where it's like, okay, it looks good in a camp type scenario, but then again, if it's a live fire type thing, can you? play spontaneously i don't know and then i you know i talk about a kenny minchie can throw from all different kind of arm slots and he kind of has a little bit of that like aw shucks like persona where it's like he wasn't groomed and probably didn't have a quarterback coach and all this like what you what you're seeing with the kenny minchie is just natural talent um okay. and then i heard recently like i said he's the fastest in the room so my yeah, knuckle, you, you know. could draw a comparison between Angeli and like their their upbringing, their comeuppance, their background, the types of high schools that they played for. You could absolutely draw a comparison. CJ Carr, probably faster, better athlete overall, quicker release, similar arm strength. Um, you know, but I watched like CJ Carr's film, and I was like, if his, if Lloyd Carr wasn't his granddad, might he be? ranked a little bit lower yeah and like I i'm with you dude i was talking to somebody about angeli and comparing those two i've seen angeli in person several times he was a crew same with car i'm like i kind of get similar vibes with them mike and what car do you mean, do you mean, like, they're, they're the way they carry themselves all, or what do you mean? all of it all the, the whole package on the field off the field i think car I, on three ranks and too low, in my opinion, I think like the borderline five stars probably too high. And I think that Angeli was ranked too low. I, I think that they're fairly similar quarterbacks. Let me ask you this, Singer. Kenny was top 10 coming out of high school, right? And he had a very quiet commitment, you know, commits, commits to Pitt. You know, didn't really do any of the recruiting stuff. Mm -hmm. top 10 talent cj carr and jelly to you and i'm maybe i'm putting you on the spot are they a top 10 talent generally speaking year over year over year are they a top 10 talent forget about the stars i'm talking about talent like, like at the quarterback position no at freaking defensive end dude well i didn't okay I, I didn't know if you meant like okay um dude i don't know yeah I, I figured i really don't know mike I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't watch enough of the other quarterbacks to say. Yeah. But all, I, I mean, three years in a row, I'm begging. I'm begging for a quarterback that can make something happen when a play goes sideways. Yeah. That's what I'm begging for. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have obviously very strong opinions on Minji. I don't, I really don't. I listen, I don't, I'm not. I don't have as strong of a feeling towards – I'm not as excited about Minchie as I was Buckner. And, again, I just think Buckner it was a unique kid in terms of, like, scratch golfers, playing D1 lacrosse. You know what I'm saying? The kid was a stud. It didn't work out. I don't feel quite the same way. I don't have the same level of excitement for Kenny as I did a Buckner. I'm just saying when I started the hashtag why not Kenny – it was because it was always assumed that he was going to be the odd man out. And I'm like, hang on, guys. Hold the phone. Mm -hmm. Hold the phone. Why can't Angeli transfer? Why can't Carr transfer? You know, it was always – it was – people probably prop Carr to, up too much, again, because of the last name, because of the polish, all that stuff, the Notre dame of a CJ Carr. And people are rooting hard for Steve. And then, again, that was my whole thing with hashtag why not Kenny was like, hey, let's not write him off. And that was before the second Riley Leonard injury. You know, you sound like you sound like me with C or with uh, Steve Angeli for the past. That's fair. I just think Ken, okay, dude, I get years. it, I agree, but I just think I think Kenny is more gifted as a as a as a thrower. He might be. 
So, and that's where, again, if he's a, if he is a gamer, I dig it, but that's an excuse. I dig it, but it's like, you're not going to convince Den Brock and Gino and coach Freeman. You're not going to do, just let me play in the game. Like I'm a gamer. The, the, the world doesn't work like that. So that's the matter. challenge. Kenny is spring ball, grow up a little bit, you know, be a pro. And that's a part of your game that you need to develop that maturity, the, the, the study habits, whatever, right? Not to say that he doesn't study, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Would you, like, I've been saying that this Notre Dame quarterback room, Leonard injury aside, like just the talent that they've assembled with these four scholarships. And then even if you want to add in Deuce coming in and then hell, if you want to look at where they're at in 2026, Mike, we might be doing our next show talking about a 2026 quarterback commitment, like just the way things are trending so fast. Would you agree that this this quarterback room is the best it's been in quite some time? Right, probably I don't know, Clawson ish time. Like just yeah, like no, from one to four, and then the recruiting. I mean, I, I I think it's as good as it's been a long time. Listen, I'm just happy they're all six one plus. I mean, that's a win in and of itself. But yes, it's a it's a good room, and that begs the question. Why even bring in O'Reilly Leonard? You know, stop kicking the can down the road as a program and let's build something. You know, build some – Freeman's talking about continuity. It's like, huh, how ironic. Let's build some. But, yeah, the room looks the room looks good. It seems like they're all going to be there. You know, nobody's going to transfer out after that spring window, depending on how this rep share gets broken down. You know, if I'm Kenny Minchie and CJ Carr somehow is getting reps and seven on seven with the ones or whatever, some of that stuff's like a slap in the face. So I'm really curious to see how this rep share works out. Yeah. You know, if Steve has a bad day. Does Kenny elevate? If Kenny has a bad day, does CJ Carr elevate, et cetera, et cetera? It's, yeah. it's really interesting. I'm going to throw a wild question at you, Mike, if right. I may. And then I want to see what else is out there for that that you'd want to chit chat about. So I, I talked about the Notre Dame fans. You had the Hartman experiment, didn't quite work out like you would have hoped. And then you have Leonard come in, and then there's the injuries. Fans are kind of like, I'm tired of it. right, right. They're, they're like, all right, let's move on. If you're a linebacker on this team, Mike, if you're a fifth year linebacker captain, do you feel like? The fans do. Do you not care? Or are you like, I've been with Steve's, you know, for the past three years. I want to ride with him. What would your take be on this? From the player perspective, what would your take be? Take on what, Singer? Be more specific, please. Your take on be like, no, like, would you agree with how the fans are thinking? Would you, would you like, no, I think Riley gives us the best chance. I go on a roll with him. Do you not really care? You're just focused more on, you know, improving the defense. There's again, as we say, I'm almost on Patreon, like the word nuance gets thrown around. If that was a drinking game, you'd be hammered an hour into it. There's a lot of nuance there. Yeah. If I'm on the defensive side of the ball, I'm kind of more worried about my unit to be specific, but I'm not dodging the question. I don't think Singer, it's a like I'm rooting for Steve, you know, on the team, right? I, I'm I'm on Steve, and like the other another kid in the locker room next to me is like, no, I'm rooting for Kenny, and the other one's like, no, I think Riley's the best. It doesn't work like that. I'm saying that the the piece of the, the competition piece, and I got scorched last year talking about how bringing in a Hartman might affect the locker room or whatever, whatever, and it comes down to the competition thing. Because I compete my ass off all winter. I compete my ass off all summer conditioning, compete during spring ball. Like I'm competing. I won my job. and I, Or I'm hoping to win my job as a starting corner, starting safety, you name the spot. And then this guy is given the job after injuries and all that stuff. That would be problematic in a locker room to me. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. That I don't think the kids, the the other team, his teammates, the, the, that quarterback room's teammates, I doubt that they're rooting for particular players. They might have friendships. You know, Kenny was in my class. I'm rooting for Kenny. You know, yeah. I was in Steve's class, right? There's a there's a degree of that, but it comes down to that competition um, talk. 
is it is it is it just empty that we're just saying that or is this a real competition because now it should be there's no way going into fall camp dude singer there's no way going into fall camp Brian Leonard could be your starter he hasn't had a chance to compete all spring there's no way That's well. That's if it was a competition, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So that that could get sticky. Yeah. All right. I think that wraps up quarterback talk, Mike. Uh, what else is on your mind, man? What else is inside the mind of Mike? Oh, I did some of these some of these position battle things, and like, I sometimes I kind of get into dude like like kids that I root for, you know, kids that I'm a fan of, um, like. Starting like back to front, like I hope Adon Schuler wins his job. I hope he does. I'm we already brought in a Northwestern safety transfer a couple years ago who happened to be an all American who like didn't do boo while he was here at Notre Dame. Um, so Rod Hurd's coming in. I believe that Rod Hurd is going to compete with Jordan Clark for the starting nickel. That's what I believe. And Adon Schuler, man, he just looks the part, he is long as they come. And he's just – he's kind of a scary-looking dude back there. And any inexperience, I'm going to hope that Xavier can help get him lined up. Um, Christian Gray, you've been talking about him since high school. I mean – Freak. Dude, his – you know, this is your humorous – don't quote me on that. Like your humorous bone, like your upper arm. His, like – his arms are – stupid long i mean he's he's a longer athlete than benjamin morrison is, is if you can believe it i saw some clips and i know Jaden mickey's kind of in that talk i saw some clips just breaking down this um i said this to john that first spring practice like i watched like a 90 second two minute clip of you know like the warm-ups and that and i was looking at that like it was scrambled porn like i was 13 years old trying to watch scrambled porn you know that's how intently i was watching it <laughs> you know what i mean and i'm like i don't know if, i don't know if jade mickey has the foot speed that a morrison that a, a christian grade does so i'm just like i know he's in the mix in terms of like who's the opposite corner um morrison i'm here to say i believe it's christian gray uh bryce young hold on free- mike yes i want to talk about christian gray real quick please um uh, i'm popping up a tweet on the screen check the date this is june 3rd 2021 so this would have been before his junior year of high school, I think. He ran a 442 and a 440 at Ohio State. Damn, uh, I'd love to see what his reach was. Uh yeah, just just yeah. Well, at 6 um what 6 foot uh, one, 1 170. So, um he's a freak. This was 3 years ago he's running a 44 even if it was hand timed or something. You're even getting close to that twice. Kid's a freak. Huge, no, huge Christian Gray fan over here. I told you that corner that I trained, Avante Dickerson, that ended up being a top ten corner nationally. Mm-hmm. Ohio State doesn't recruit the state of Nebraska. I know the guy over there, so he went to camp at Ohio State. Um, and that's absolutely an electronic time. I mean, they're not hand timing out there at a camp like that. So, yeah, it's special, dude. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a talented kid. So. Bro, remember like when we, you and I first started doing this and I would fumble my way through these shows and like all we could talk about was talent on the edges? Remember that? Like that was like – you almost didn't want to watch the games. I can't even imagine how fans felt, but it was like wide receiver talent and corner talent. It's like that conversation, at least on the defensive side, is you can put it to rest. Yeah. And then you were talking about Bryce Young? Oh, I just saw a clip of him the other day. And, I mean, that's – that's a, he should be a three-year player for us. That's, that's an NFL kid. That's like first round pick type. He was walking past Jordan Patello in this clip. He's like a foot taller than him. And, you know, Freeman kind of gave him a shout out in terms of freshmen that have impressed. But yeah, dude, <laughs> this kid was in high school like six months ago. It's, it's insane. And there's Jordan, there's Patello to, to uh, Bryce's left there with the visor on, you know, and he was a starter for us. So the, the height, the arm length, I mean, like, could he be like a Stefan to it for us? So I, I'm just running through my my list of uh, 
just players that I'm kind of excited to see. I, I saw that Freeman mentioned that they're holding out Eli Raritan. You know, they're kind of picking their spots. He had a little bit of a muscle pull, which I enjoyed seeing. All this talk, Singer, of um, Den Brock loving to be an 11 personnel. And with Mitch Evans being hurt and the two guys behind Raritan, and again, they're fine players, but they're not like unique talents like an Eli is. So I like the I like the fact that they're kind of throttling him back a little bit. Okay. The players behind him, they're not they're not going to keep a defensive coordinator awake at night in the way I think Eli potentially can. Okay. Okay. Mm. Good deal, Mike. Dude, I just talked for like 50 minutes straight. <laughs> I, I I chatted here and there. Yeah. You got any super chats on there? Or any 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 I uh, I turned them off for a few weeks. So mm-hmm. I, I think people are just getting used to the fact that we have them back on. <laughs> so That's fair. they're not they're not flying. Uh we don't have one comment. Dion Colsey got hurt, Mike, by the way. I don't want to talk about it. Simkev yeah. said, couldn't Leonard sit out this year and then transfer again for 25? I mean, he could I think he actually could just sit out this year and play Notre Dame next year. So because I, yeah, I think he's just played every year. He has a year of uh, or he Before, could take a medical or something. Yeah, earlier today, um, I, I I just I wanted to double check. He has one year of eligibility left. Yeah, and but I think he can still redshirt, or this could be like a medical redshirt year or something. Oh, but he could he transfer out after spring hypothetically. I don't know, dude. I don't know what the rules are anymore, man. I don't they know, changed yeah, so much. Right. And then you had the Proctor kid transfer twice within yeah. like two months. So, yeah, Chief I mean, Brody did send one in. He said, uh, um, Chief Brody said uh, he um, he hates that you're always right or something like that. So the Riley Leonard, and again, this is we're just we're just talking talking here. We're chit chatting, chit chatting. Tim Hud. Yep. So if. If, if you never did a medical, if you never did a physical on a Riley Leonard, even though there was like a, a transaction that took place, there's no guarantee that like Riley Leonard's going to, going to, going to stay. Not even at all suggesting that could be the case, but like, if he wanted to, he could dip out. It's like, well, wait a minute. We paid you all this money. He's like, yeah. I mean, it's not, he didn't sign a contract. You know, like when you talk about like sports agents, like guys going to the NFL, there might be an agent that'll float you 50 grand in the hopes that like you sign with him. You could take that money and go sign with somebody else. None of that's binding. Hashtag why not Kenny. All right, dude. Any anything else? Um the answer can be no, Mike. I mean, offensive line, people love yeah. to talk about. My only thought on offensive line, and of course, it's not my only thought. I'm not worried about it. Me neither, dude. Yeah. I'm not at all. I, I love the O-line. Why? Just I, bigger well, athletes? I, I think partly because I covered all of them. This is the first year I think I've covered every offensive lineman they recruits. Mm-hmm. I love Charles Jagasaw. I think he can play tackle or guard. Um and you've got to understand my Notre Dame sources have been freaking out about this kid, you know, for, for years at this point, I love the story of Tosh Baker staying in this age, Mike. I love that he stayed and yeah, he's six, eight. And then I think between Coogan, Spindler and Shrouth, you have three really good guards. Um, you know, the guy who doesn't start of that group probably starts at what? 95% of, college football programs in this country. And then you got, you know, like a top five center in college football in Ashton Craig. So I'm I excited. Think that, yeah. I, yeah. I, I like that. I think it's, I think it's, there's enough talent there and I know they're young and I know continuity experience, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I heard Horka say like on a show, like it's Spindler's job to lose. Okay. I, I, you know, I don't think that's the case. I just feel like, and I'm, maybe this is me just wishful thinking, Singer. Okay. That there's going to be some experimentation along that offensive line in terms of even positions. Hopefully not in the middle of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> NC State. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I forgot about that. But, like, 
am I t- in, in totally convinced that Jagasaw is going to be a starting left tackle at Notre Dame for the next three years? I'm not. Might they move him around? Am I like, is Emil Wagner married at right, married to the right tackle position? I don't believe that's the case. I'm just telling you. And I, I love the fact that Emil Wagner's weight has become a thing. But I, I want that to kind of create a little bit of external pressure on Emil. Oh, well, that's been a thing since he was like a junior in high school. But now it's, but his time has come. You feel me? All right. So, what do you think about that? Like, you know, you got to wonder if it's Coach Beak or not, but what he's 290, 295. He's I did definitely see bigger a, than the list at 281 physically. Look yeah, at I did see a quote where someone was like, I don't know why they're talking about 280, 280 pounds. And I'm like, you guys have him listed at 6'6", 281, so maybe that's why people are calling him 280 pounds. But, yeah, if he's 290, 295, do you, do you think that he's fine? Like, he, he can play that? Play that? Well, yes, I do. I do. But maybe not on the right side. Okay. There's data behind this. Of course, I don't have it. But, like, offenses have a propensity to run to the right more than they do yep. the left. Yeah. Right? It's, it's like – that's kind of what I'm saying in terms of the experimentation thing. It's like, why couldn't you? And for any anybody that's going to poo-poo what I'm about to say, it's like go back to last fall camp where like Pat Coogan came out of nowhere, right? Yeah. Um, so none of this is set in stone, but like why couldn't you kick a meal over to left guard or excuse me, left tackle, and then maybe you'd have a Coogan or something, somebody with a little bit more experience lined up next to him, maybe a Shrouth has, has, has played for us to help him out. Craig at center, Jagasaw at right guard, and Baker at right tackle. I mean, none of this stuff is set in stone. You know what I'm saying? But do I like him at 290 on the right side of the line? Maybe not as much as I like him on the, at playing left tackle. Okay. But he's an NFL. I mean, I can remember watching his tape with you. He's a first-round pick in terms of his feet and his bend and his athleticism. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Now, I will say, Joe Walt, what a stud. Mm. He was interviewed, you know, at his pro day, the little Notre Dame podcast deal, and they were talking about him gaining weight and all this. And he was like, yeah, man, and this is what I need, like, a meal to understand. And I've had teammates that went through this. Like, Joe Alt's waking himself up at 2.30 in the morning to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So it's not like that weight gain happens accidentally, Singer. Right. You know, like, you're literally force-feeding yourself to put on those pounds. So it's like that's that conversation – and I said this the other day on Patreon, like if I'm Coach Rudolph, if I'm Denbrock, I literally tell Emil, like Emil, you get to 295, you're starting. That's that's it. And just we always talk about it, dangle that carrot. You get to 295, job's yours, brother. That I would love that. I would love that too. Yeah. Got to I see mean, him in high school, sweetheart of a kid. And his recruiting process was was kind of crazy. Committed to Notre Dame when no one thought he was. So, it's no, he's a fa- he's a fantastic player. I mean, could Emil play guard? I mean, like I said, that's what springs for. And I just tend to think if I, they have an athlete behind them under center, if I'm putting together an offensive line, I can shoot for upside as opposed to stability. If I have more of a statuesque, lesser athlete at quarterback. I'm going to go a little bit more conservative. There's no mental errors. Their assignment correct. Maybe a little bit less physically talented, but I'm not going to lose sleep over them missing an assignment. If there is an athlete, I can go more upside on the offensive line to me. Okay. All right, Mike. I think we're going to wrap up tonight's show right there, folks. Please hit the thumbs up on this video if you've not done so yet. Subscribe to our Blue and Gold YouTube channel, of course, for more content. Uh, if you're listening via podcast, appreciate you guys as well. Um, please leave us a kind review wherever you get your podcasts. Of course, our offer for our uh, YouTube and podcast audience over at blueandgold.com. Our premium subscription is $1 for two months when you use the pro- promo code UND1 as a new subscriber. So please check that out. Go to Mike's uh, Twitter accounts and his Twitter bio. He has his Patreon link. So if you guys... Um, just cannot get enough of Mike Goolsby. That's um, what it is. Go to the go to his Twitter bio. Um, there's a link right there, and you can hear from Goolsby and the um, always entertaining and very handsome John Kennedy 
Um, so, yep, that's going to wrap up tonight's show. I really appreciate you guys for tuning in. And as always, we will catch you next time.